Doodle Bud, and today we're looking at a uh, pretty cool looking pen here. This is the LIY, which also means live in you. The exact uh, model name is a little tricky because depending where you look, you get different names. Uh, you'll hear it call be called a colorful resin fountain pen. Another one calls it the acrylic resin acetate fiber awesome fountain pen. Either way, we're going to go through it today, see if it's awesome, and uh, chat a little bit more. So the pen, obviously, comes in a box. This is the box. Here we go here, little logo. Slides out, sits in there. That's about it, nothing too crazy. It is sitting on this little pen rest that it comes with. Um, th this thing does not have a, a, a pen clip, as you can see, it's very smooth, and, or even a roll stop, so we'll try about that too. Um, the particular color of this one, there's a, depend again, depending where you buy it, this is color option 013. Another site, you look at it, calls it the Shazan. I think that's how you say it. Something like that. S-H-I-S-A-N. Um, it's pretty cool. Like, it's super layered. Um, there's just so much depth to this. I haven't seen anything like this before. Actually, on the roll stop, because it's you get a, sort of a cross-section, and um, you can just really see that. It's pretty cool stuff. So, again... There's a lot of words getting smushed together in the description of this pen, so I really still don't know what this material is made of, or it's just a combination of a bunch, but it's super unique, super cool. There's different colors. I was actually deciding between this one and there's like a hot pink and neon yellow. It looked pretty cool, but then I thought, I don't know how much I'd whip that thing out um, to work with, <laughs> at least in public, maybe in private. So I decided to go with this which is a little more muted from the screaming uh, pink and yellow one, which I thought was pretty cool. But this is still quite flashy and, and catchy. Um, it's got a, a little logo here at the top. Actually, I like that sort of uh, peppermint green with the chrome. That looks nice to me anyways. Plain in the back, other than showcasing off this beautiful material. Like, that's so cool. This actually reminds me of, I'm a bit of a astronomy kind of astrophysics guy. And uh, when you see close-up shots of some of the storms on Jupiter, you get these crazy clouds with a lot of depth to them. And it's sort of reminded me of that. Anyways, you screw off the cap. It uh, does it in one and a half turns. Um, no cap liner that I see. It's just a step in the machining of the material. Um, the whole pen is the same material. Section, cap, body, everything. Um this one here comes with, it's a Schmidt nib uh, feed and uh, uh, what you want, a converter unit all together. So it's just the guts, a Schmidt guts in a different looking pen body. So we've all seen this before, cartridge converter, boom, there you go. To take it apart, I've seen this in other pens too, and I'll actually do a little video on this later. Um, so there's just this machine piece of, whether it's steel or aluminum, Feels like aluminum to me. It's pretty darn light. And uh, it just, you know, these just thread into each other. So they just made this slug, obviously, to accommodate uh, the threads there and to fit into the section that rolled away there that's just coming back now. So that's all you do to take it apart. Um, so one thing with this pen, there is no options for nibs. That's it. All you get is a fine Schmidt. Um, nothing wrong with that at all as far as the nib. But it's just, it is a little odd that there is no options. But if you have a different uh, Schmidt nib, maybe there's different models and styles. I'm not, a, I'm not a total buff on that stuff. Maybe if you don't like the fact that it's a fine, you have one that you can just, or that you have one, you can buy one, you can just swap it out to give it the medium or the broad or the uh, stub or whatever that you want going on in there as well. So all in all, it feels very nice. It's very smooth. I worry, you know, maybe it's a little bit slippery. Um, if you had greasy hands or something like that, uh, the threads, you don't feel these at all. Very smooth. You don't feel those. The capping with the threads, I thought I just mentioned, it does feel a little funny. I don't know if, uh, if it's, I don't know just if it's the depth of the thread or maybe the diameter of the machining is off. I used to, um, I don't 
work in engineering anymore, but as an engineer, worked in a lot of shops. And there's just something with the thread being cut properly. Just, I don't know, there's something that feels off about it. Also with this material, it makes a little sound. You know, put it closer to the mic. So it's just got that little squeak to it. Um, so yeah, the threads are just, they're, they work just fine. This is not going to come apart. They're just, the tactile feel is a bit off. Um, with some of the other colors, one thing I will mention this because I see this fault a lot is this one doesn't have it. That's why I chose this one is some of them will have these threads in metal and then you can screw this on. And the problem with that is if it's, you know, plastic on plastic, same material, it's okay. But metal on plastic, metal wins. And with this, you could just keep screwing. There's no physical stop. Um, companies that do it right, say in this Monteverde, yes, that's metal, but they have this collar here and the cap diameter is such that when it closes, it stops on that collar. You can't keep tightening. Other pens have done a good job of that as well. Uh, I'd definitely be worried with this one. If you chose a color option and those threads are metal, I, I could just really see these cap threads getting beat up pretty bad. Uh, but it feels great in the hand. I'm going to ink it up and just give it a quick whirl and a few more comments on it. And we'll uh, probably wrap things up after that. Okay, so we're inked up today. I'm using the uh, Faber-Castell Deep Sea Green. One little note, like they have such beautiful bo uh, bottles. This particular ink, it's very full because when I saw it, it looked so beautiful. And that color I thought just was going to be amazing. Uh, but then when you write with it, <laughs> It just seems uh, like it's just missing something. Anyways, that's a separate comment. Maybe you love that ink and you have it. For me, it's just off a touch, not quite saturated enough. But uh, so what we're looking at, this is the full of, uh, not wrong pen. This is the uh, Live In You. And many dis different names. This is the awesome resin. And this is in the fine Schmidt nib. For the writing sample, uh, I thought I actually would just give you a little more information on this. So this stands for live in you. Uh, but then I actually, I got in touch with the lady on uh, Etsy. They also, you can buy it on eBay. Just to know, well, what does that really mean? Um, what does live in you mean? I kind of thought maybe something within you gets to come out and I was sort of right on that. Um, Again, it's being translated, so the sentence doesn't make perfect uh, grammatical sense, but I'm just going to write out what, uh, what she texted back to me. So, you know, things are getting translated a little bit. Um, Essentially, I guess it's just, and that's really what the pen is. It's a way for you to uh, sort of express yourself, whether it's artistically or with your writing or maybe you're writing a book or poetry or whatever there as well. So I think they're just encouraging that. And these are expressive type of pens just due to the colors and the nature of the pen as well. Um, so let's just talk about it a little bit. Um, price point, this goes for, I paid 110 Canadian. I just don't know if it's really that price or not. There's other pens that you can get where it's the same kind of concept, where it's a cool, funky material with some other guts and they even make it, you know, I'm going to do a comparison later on another time, but it's the same system where there's that collar and everything screws into that and they wrap a pen around it. Nothing wrong with that. Um, but you can get ones that are like 35 to $40 Canadian um, that look pretty cool as well. Same kind of styles, like no, no roll stops and whatnot. Um, so I, I, you know, I don't know enough about this material. Maybe it just takes a lot more to work with. Even just making it, that could, you know, definitely uh, make the costs go up quite a bit more as well. Uh, but you know, I just think there are there's a lot of competition at this price point. And there's lots of options, and this stood out. I, you know, I don't regret getting the pen. I think it looks great. I'm going to keep it. Um, but you know, a couple of things that's missing, I think just nib options, there's lots of Schmidt nibs. So it's kind of odd 
you just don't have a few options if you wanted fine or medium or broad. You mean you don't have, to have everything, but a few options would have been cool. A big one, I think, for me that was a bit of a miss was just the whole no roll stop thing. Um, I don't know if I'm ever going to take this pen out into the wild, you know, uh, once coffee shops are ever open again. Um, take this somewhere where it could roll away or drop that's not going to be on a soft surface or in a, or fall a far distance. So I think this will be a home or office pen only. I don't know if this if I'm going to take this out and about with me because uh, the whole thing with this pen is 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 this material and the look. So if something happens to it, you know, that's the end of it. So that's the whole reason I bought the pen. So I really want to preserve that with the pen and take care of it. But I, I actually might put a roll stop in. I'm going to look into it. Um, there's about 18 millimeters, sorry, eight millimeters down before the uh, the barrel material gets a little bit thinner to accommodate the converter and everything. So it's a little bit thicker here for about eight millimeters. So I might come down about five millimeters and uh, make a small hole and then insert a roll stop. And this thing is going to do it maybe right around here somewhere. So that way, you know, and I'll set it so you can, one thing with this, how it's assembled with that collar, you can line up the nib to be wherever you want, but I'll just make it so whatever spot I pick, let's say it's here. When I assemble the pen, I'll make sure the nib is aligned uh, to that roll stop. So when you're holding it, the roll stop won't be cutting into your hair anywhere. It'll just, you know, however you're going to hold it. Let's say that little dot for reference is the roll stop. I'll just make sure it's always pointing up like that. Um, yes, yeah, so that's only a little comment there. I, I like the pen. Enjoy working with it. It looks nice. Uh, before I shut it down, I'll just do a couple of quick size comparisons. So you have that as well. Um, I think just a bit of a miss on not having any nib sizes and a roll stop. Even just the roll stop because you, you could probably get other nips for it, but just not having a roll stop, I think was definitely a, a little bit of a miss on this pen as well. Actually, I'll just jot down the dimensions for you. Uh, so you have it here as well. So as far as diameter, uh, the cap, oh, this, speaking of cap, it can't be posted. Can't post this one. The cap is 15.5 uh, millimeters. The uh, barrel, so main barrel of the pen here, this part here, that is 14 millimeters. The section has a bit of a taper. It goes from about 10.5 to 11.5 at the top. So all in all, I mean, that's those are good numbers. That's, um, you know, for girth and, and section size, those these are very comfortable numbers. As far as the overall length of the uh, pen itself, so just the, the pen body with the nib is 133. And the whole pen capped is 143. And as far as weight, let me get my scale out here and we'll do a weight. Okay, as far as weight, here we go, ready to go. Hopefully it won't move there, 30 grams. It seems, <laughs> it's a very popular weight. I have a lot of pens I've recently weighed. They're all right around 30 grams, so there you go. So as far as dimensions, as, you know, comparing other pens, there we are there in the middle. It's very close to the Jinhao 159. That's that right there. That's a Monteverde Elmo, Twisby Vac 700, Pelican M805, Twisby Eco, and a Lamy 2000. I'll uncap those and show you that as well. So here we are uncapped with the exact same pens. Um, it's very, very similar to say the Jinhao 159 or the Pelican uh, M805, the 800 lineup there. So there you are, there you have it. You know, I like the pen. I just, like I mentioned, those couple little things, not having nib options, um, not having a roll stop uh, was the only thing I think they kind of missed on. And the price, you can get something similar, a little bit cheaper. But again, it just, you know, it could be this material cost. Is, it's just so much more to do. So, you know, I haven't made this material. I know nothing about it. So uh, here I am commenting on it. But that could be the factor why it costs a lot more. Um, or maybe it is overpriced, I don't know, or priced just right. But it's definitely a very unique looking pen. This will stand out in your collection, especially if I got the hot pink one. But uh, cool looking pen. There you go. Now you got some information on it. If that's been going across your radar, hopefully this helped you out. We will catch you next time. Love to get your comments and like and subscribe. That helps out the channel. Thanks so much.